This video is a brief tutorial on getting started with Microsoft Teams for class and colleague collaboration use from the perspective of a teacher working in British Columbia. I've used Teams fairly extensively with colleagues and students for the past few months due to the COVID-19 pandemic and could say that the video chat feels relatively comparable to other collaborative networking platforms such as Zoom or BlueJeans. The benefit of Teams, however, is that it also has the functionality to save groups of people known as Teams and work collaboratively on Microsoft documents as well as store these documents securely for later access. For the purpose of this video, I've created an example team for a carpentry class. I can access it by clicking on the appropriate icon. Once inside the team, you can see that members have access to the communication tools of that team, such as general chats and video chat. For further customization within the team categories, there are also channels. These channels can further sort out people depending on what project they are working on. This is excellent for group projects. Within each channel is also a running text, the kind you would see in a text-based platform such as Slack. So the communication can be fluid between channel groups. For example, if I want to create a separate channel for a learning topic, I can simply add it by clicking here. In this case, I want to have students have a basic understanding of the feudal process learned in joinery. So I will type in the channel name here and click Add. Once the channel has created, you have a plethora of options how you would like students to interact with that channel. I have previously found a YouTube video I really like that explains this concept. So to customize the channel, I cl click on this little plus button find the corresponding application that I like, in this case YouTube, and post the link to the video in that channel. There we go. Now when students access this room, they can watch the video and they can also type in any potential questions or comments they may have about this feudal process. As far as uploading files is concerned, all members of Teams can upload files. This is not only excellent for distributing information, but for collecting assignments from students as well. As we have been working in an asynchronous setting, this is the safest way to distribute and collect information. Uh, assignments can easily be created by clicking on the Assignment tab in a channel the teacher then can create and post any documents and rubrics related to this assignment. Once complete, students will also get a notification that there is a new assignment to complete for that channel. Likewise, for students to hand in documents, uh, they will automatically get the notification that they have an assignment to do. They can simply click on that assignment and complete it. And then once they're finished, they simply click Submit, and it will be automatically submitted. Creating files is also a snap. You simply need to click on the plus drop-down menu for a particular channel, and click on the particular file you want to create, and it will be created. You can then work collaboratively on these with students, or you can set up group assignments. Much like Google Docs, all of the changes you make within these files will now save automatically, so you or your classmates or colleagues don't have to worry about losing important data if your computer crashes, or if there's a power outage, which seems to happen frequently where I live. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, is the video chat option. Uh, the video chat works by simply clicking on the video chat icon in a particular channel and clicking Meet Now. Uh, if you would like to invite more people to this room, you can simply type in the person's name you want that has a Microsoft Office account, and you can add them to that channel. Now, if you want to break students into breakout rooms, you can simply go back to your team here. Uh, you need to create a few different breakout room channels and tell your students which breakout room they're going into. Then, as a moderator, you can easily access all of the rooms by simply clicking on which room you want to go into, clicking on Meet, going back to the Team channel, clicking on the next room, clicking Meet, and doing this until you have all of the rooms loaded up. At this point, you can now switch back and forth 
between rooms seamlessly in case you need to moderate discussions between the rooms. One thing that our school used quite extensively is the scheduling a meeting option in the calendar. So to do that, all you do is click on the calendar, click on when you would like the meeting to take place, type in the information and invite the required attendees, which can be students or colleagues, and then click save. Everyone that you have typed in will automatically get a request for you to attend the meeting and all they need to do is click on the calendar and click join meeting to join that. Uh, these are just the basics on how to effectively use Teams, uh, but the functionality does definitely not end there. I suggest making a team and a few channels and really diving into playing with some of the user settings. You may find that this is an ap excellent application to keep your classroom organized and keep the students engaged in these trying times. Have a great day and take care.